Hey everyone, Brian Lagunas here. You know, a couple days ago, I released a video showing you how to replace the system menu on right click of a WPF window. Ever since I posted that video, I've been getting tons of questions. And the, the most popular question by far is, I don't wanna replace the context menu and, and you know lose all of those functions of the windows, such as maximize, minimize, uh, restore, close, things like that. So I want to keep all that functionality, but I want to add my own menu items to it. How do you do that? Well, I'm glad you asked, because I'm going to show you how. Roll the intro. The sample we're working with today is a very simple WPF application with a single window. As you can see, we have defined a text block in XAML which identifies the client area of this window. What we want to do is when we right click on the non-client area of the window, which is the caption or the title area, we want to append our items to this context menu. But as you may know, this is no ordinary context menu. This is actually the system menu of the non-client area. And we can't just use simple XAML to manipulate this. So let's go ahead and implement the code in order to append our items. Now, we can't manipulate that window with XAML. Instead, we have to use something called the Windows Interop. Let's start by hooking into the loaded event of the window. We'll create an event handler. And in this event handler, we want to use the Windows Interop helper to grab a handle to this window so we can hook into the Windows messaging system. So let's do that. I went ahead and wrote the code really quick for you. Essentially what we're doing is we're grabbing the handle to this window. Once we have the handle to the window, we create an hwin source. Using the hwin source, we can now add a source hook to the Windows messaging system. If you watched my previous video on creating a custom context menu, this code may look familiar. But now comes the hard part. We have to actually write the code to append our own context menu items. So the next step is to actually gain access to the current system menu. And the way we do that is we have to actually use the Win32 APIs. So we're gonna hop into a little bit of interop. So we're gonna create a private static extern get system menu. We're expecting hwind and a revert parameters. Now, here comes the trick. We want to use a DLL import attribute. And in this attribute, we're gonna say this method is located in the user 32.dll. Let's make sure we add our using statements. Now we can grab a handle to the system menu. Let's create a variable to hold this. System menu handle. Get system menu. We're gonna pass in the window handle and we're going to say false. This will give us the handle to the system menu. Now we need to write the code in order to append new menu items to this menu. This is going to require another Win32 API call. Private static extern bool insert menu. We need the menu handle. We need the position where the menu is going to be inserted. We need the flags that we're going to assign to that menu item. We need a unique ID for that menu item. And we need a label for that menu item. Once again, since this is a Win32 call, we're going to use our DLL import. And this is going to be located in the same assembly, user32.dll. Now that we have that method defined, we can go ahead and call our method. Insert menu. We need the menu handle. This is the system menu handle. We need the position. Uh, in this case, this is going to be five. Then we need some flags. This is where we're gonna wanna create some constants uh, to manage these flags. So let's go ahead and create a couple of constants. The first constant we're gonna create, let's go ahead and go public const int32. It's going to be a flag called by position. We're gonna set this equal to zero x 400. This specifies that an ID is a position index into the menu and not a command ID. So we'll go back to our insert menu and we're gonna use by position. Now the next thing I wanna do is actually, I wanna make this a separator. 
I don't want this to be an actual menu item. So we're going to add another constant here. And this is going to be a flag called separator. We're going to set this to 0x800. This draws a horizontal dividing line. This flag is used only in the uh, drop down menu, right? A sub menu or shortcut menu. So we're going to add this flag as well. And then of course, the new item ID, we will say zero. And then what is the string uh, representation of the separator? It doesn't have one, so we'll say string.empty. Now we have created our separator. The next step is let's go ahead and just copy this. And we're gonna modify this for our new menu item. So I'll call this item one. And I'll call this item two. Now, obviously they're not gonna have the same position. So we'll update the positions. So they're one after the other. And we cannot have zero as an ID for these items because we're going to have to reference these in code. So once again, let's come up to the top and let's create some constants. I'll call this one item one ID. We'll make this 1000. Copy. And we can make it whatever we want. Let's say 1001 for item two. Item one ID. Item two ID. Now let's go ahead and run the application and see what our menu looks like. Our application is running. Now if I right click the header of the window, we will see that we have our new separator, our item one and our item two. So the next step is to handle the click event of these items. So when I click on item one, I want something to happen. So let's go ahead and work on that. So if you remember from my previous video in which we created a custom context menu, you'll know that this winproc method here that we hooked into the Windows messaging service is allowing us to hook in to the Windows messaging process. So anytime a message is invoked, we can intercept that here. And in this case, we wanna listen for a very specific command, which is called a system command. So we'll say if the message equals the message command we're looking for, that command is 0x112, then we're going to do something. Obviously, we do not want to take this approach. We're going to pull this out and we'll create another constant. We will call this Windows message sys command. Now, whenever we hear this sys command, we're gonna execute some code. In this case, we're gonna check the parameter to see what was clicked. So we can do a simple switch. We'll do a switch on W param. We'll convert this to int 32. And the first case is if it equals item one ID, we're going to do something, right? In this case, let's say, I don't know, we show a message box dot show. How about item one was clicked? And of course we wanna set handled equal to true. And then the next case might be if it's item two ID, we're gonna say, let's just copy what we've written up top, paste it, we'll say item two was clicked. And of course, make sure we handle the message. Now let's run our application. Now that our window is shown, we're going to right click our window. We will see our menu items. And now I'm going to click my menu item and we can see item one was clicked right click again, item two was clicked. Pretty easy. So as you can see, we are listening for Windows messages. Whenever the system command message is invoked, we're checking the parameter to see if it matches the ID of our menu items. If it does match the ID of a menu item, we're going to call some type of code, whatever that may be. And that's it. That's how easy it is to append the existing WPF window system menu.